In CBS 2 News at 5 with breaking news tonight, a large garage on fire in Granada Hills. Stu Modell is live in Sky 2 with the very latest tonight. Stu? Well, LA City Fire arrived out here and they came to what they were welcomed with with a lot of fire and a lot of smoke. It's on a large piece of property out here in the Granada Hills area, right at the 17,900 block of San Fernando Mission. Now, LA City Fire made their way back there. They did put out the most of that fire. You can see it just kind of reigniting right now. In the end, they said several outbuildings were on fire and a garage. Though, as we understand it, no injuries to firefighters, no injuries to civilians. Live in Sky 2 over Granada Hills, I'm Stu Mandel. Jeff, Susie, back to you. All right, Stu, thank you for that. And more breaking news right now, this time out of Boyle Heights. One man is seriously hurt when a house suddenly explodes. CBS 2's Tina Patel is live in Boyle Heights right now, where rescue crews rushed in to help, and frightened neighbors are wondering what, exact, what exactly happened. Tina? Well, this street is now reopened, but the house here is still red tagged. Investigators still trying to figure out what it was that sent this one man to the hospital with critical burns. When I seen the house, wow, I opened my eyes. Victor Corona can't believe all the damage to this home. He says he was working in a shop around 1230 when he heard something down the street. And I hear the noise like a boom. I, I think, you know, somebody hit the car or the big semi making a lot of noise sometimes. It turns out it was an explosion, but investigators still don't know what caused it. All four bearing walls do have damage. The roof was actually lifted and there are uh, substantial cracks uh, throughout that building. There was a 45 year old man home at the time. Victor says it looks like he had severe injuries. Actually, everything born and his the hand you see that bones. He says there had been a garage sale at the home just a few days ago. He thinks the man had been getting ready to move out. The owner of the home who lives nearby didn't want to talk on camera. He says he's still waiting to get more details from investigators. So is Victor. He wants to make sure something like this doesn't happen again. I don't feel safe, but, but uh, everything they put the line crossed. Now we're told that that man who's in the hospital is actually 65 years old, but fire officials don't have an update on his condition. They do tell us there were two dogs inside at the time. They have both been rescued and are now being cared for. Live in Boyle Heights, Tina Patel, CBS 2 News. Well, Hurricane Michael is gone, but look what it left behind. Shattered buildings and shattered lives. Mm -hmm. A powerful storm left death and massive destruction in Florida. Well, Michael is now a tropical storm drenching Georgia and the Carolinas. Yeah, the historic storm obliterated areas and has some changed lives forever. That's right. Tonight, there are six confirmed deaths, including an 11-year-old girl who died when a tree fell in her home in Georgia. Utility crews right now trying to restore power to more than 900,000 homes and businesses. Mexico Beach and Panama City are two of the hardest hit areas. The storm washed away entire blocks of homes. Well, as we have been showing you through these pictures, it is unimaginable devastation. CBS 2's Hillary Lane joins us live now from Panama City Beach with a firsthand look at the aftermath. Hillary? Susie, Jeff, we've been walking around Panama City Beach all day, and the devastation is absolutely unbelievable. This is just one example of what we're seeing block after block after block. This large tree uprooted, slamming into this law firm. Luckily, no one was inside at the time. Just a block away, we, came, we drove by as we saw father and son. They were hugging, they were crying, looking at their grocery store that they built together that was completely leveled. Residents say the only thing left to do is rebuild. Entire neighborhoods are flattened in Mexico Beach, Florida, where Michael may landfall as a catastrophic Category 4 hurricane. There's nothing but concrete slabs where houses and businesses once stood. Total devastation. It's leveled. Things that were on the beach are now on the other side of the street. Trees are snapped. Boats are tossed out of a canal. The town's water tower is tipped over. Officials are warning people to stay away. Roads are not open and you will not be able to get home if you live in, in or near the coast. Hurricane Michael also ripped through Panama City Beach here, completely destroying this automotive shop. Many other businesses here also suffered major damage. It was wild. Gary and Pam Barr ran from their veterinary hospital to a former we, we bank building across the street to ride out the storm. We're in the vault. 
Pam and I were in the vault with a couple of three animals. The bar said they felt safe inside the vault, but couldn't really hear the storm. It was very interesting because when the roof blew off after we'd only been there maybe an hour and a tremendous noise, you could tell something bad happened outside. Eventually, the vault ceiling started leaking and caving in, and the bars started praying. We held on. Uh, to our hands and went, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And we're together. So it's okay. The couple says all of the animals under their care survived the storm. Michael is now moving up the East Coast. Damage in the region is estimated to be in the tens of billions of dollars. Search and rescue operations are still underway. We just watched crews rush through this area. 300,000 people are still without power tonight right here in Florida. Live in Panama City Beach, Hillary Lane, back over to you in L.A. All right, Hillary, thank you very much. So where is that storm now? Let's turn now to CBS 2's Garth Camp with an update on the storm's path. Yeah, well, we continue to track the rain. Heavy rain falling right now from Norfolk all the way, and that's over by the naval base, the naval sub base that used to be out there at least. Up towards the D.C. area right now, you can see these bands continuing to pump down several inches an hour of rain. So flooding going on this area, if you're traveling out towards D.C., Dulles Airport in the Norfolk as well, you'll run into that across the 64 up through the 95 as uh, uh, well. This still putting heavy thunderstorms on the northeast side of this. So at any point in time, it's always possible to see tornadic activity when you get this kind of rotation going on into the atmosphere. It's going to continue to move up through the D.C. area into Baltimore through the evening hours. You can see some of those bands already stretching up into Philadelphia before it pushes itself off. Sure, it has been wild. Please contribute and help out if you can to the hurricane victims there. We'll have our weather coming up in just a little bit. Back to you guys. All right, Gar, thank you. And we have breaking news right now in the Little Rock area near Palmdale, where remains have been discovered in a burned out building. Sky 2 over the scene just over an hour ago, where an investigation was underway. The LA County Sheriff's homicide detectives are on scene right now, along with the coroner's office. Investigators have not determined if the remains are human. We do have a reporter on the way, and we will bring you the latest information as we get it. Now to reward this being offered in the unsolved murder of a popular college basketball player. Saeed Ivey was shot to death two years ago in a car just hours after his 20th birthday. And today homicide detectives announced a $20,000 reward. Ivey was a rising basketball star at East LA College and someone shot him June 19th, 2016 outside of an apartment complex in Monterey Park. His mother says losing him has left a hole in her heart. He was a jewel and his spirit and how motivational he was and how inspiring he was and just full of energy. Just a wonderful young man. So I just ask of you, please, whatever you can do, just help. Ivy's mother hopes finding his killers will help her and all who love him heal from his loss. Well, first a chase, then a shooting. Huntington Beach police shot and killed a suspect after a stolen car pursuit. The man and a woman got out of the car after it ran over spike strips. Officers shot the man and he died at the hospital. Investigators say they recovered a gun but would not say if the suspect fired at them. They arrested the woman. This actually happened at Palm Avenue and 12th Street. The closing bell and another tough day on Wall Street. Stocks tumbled yet again after yesterday's 800 point drop. The Dow Jones fell 545 points today. The Nasdaq lost 93 and the S&P 500 dropped 57 points. And this actually marks the sixth straight day of losses for the market. It's rattled by rising interest rates, signs of a slowdown in the global economy and the trade war between the U.S. and China. Rapper Kanye West created a surreal moment in the White House today in the Oval Office after President Trump signed a bill to help musicians. CBS 2 political reporter Dave Bryan is here now with the rant everyone is talking about today, Dave. And there was plenty of controversy and questions about all this. President Trump isn't usually upstaged, but rapper Kanye West's more than 10-minute monologue in the Oval Office even left the president nearly speechless. But some critics tonight claim the appearance was all a shameless stunt cooked up by the White House to get more support from African Americans in next month's election. It started as a star-studded day at the White House. First, President Trump gathered with musicians like the Beach Boys and Kid Rock to sign the Music Modernization Act, a bill that updates royalties and copyright rules for the music industry. But later, the president had lunch with rapper Kanye West and football legend Jim Brown to discuss issues affecting the African-American community. We feel that stop and frisk 
uh, does not help the relationships in the city. I think it's a shame what's happening in Chicago. If we can do it a different way, Kanye, I'm totally open. But then West went on a 10-minute profanity-laced tirade about racism, mental illness, and even defending his support for the president. He might not have expected to have a crazy like Kanye West run up and uh, support, but best believe we are going to make America great. It was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. You made a Superman. That was That's my favorite superhero. And you made a Superman king. For me, I love Hillary. I love everyone, right? But the campaign, I'm with her, just didn't make me feel as a guy. We can empower the pharmaceuticals. And, and make more money. They have to bring jobs into America. At one point, West was making the case for a presidential pardon for a man said to be serving six life sentences, and West, in explaining things, wandered into alternate universes. So there's theories that there's infinite amounts of universe and there's alternate universe. So it's very important for me to get Hoover out because in an alternate universe, I am him and I have to go and get him free. West urged Saturday Night Live to present a more flattering image of President Trump. What I need Saturday Night Live to improve on and what I need the liberals to improve on is if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes, the best factories. West was also oblivious that he had apparently inadvertently shared his iPhone's password. And in the end, the rapper and the prez hugged it out. Now, tonight, some of those critics we mentioned are charging that 26 days before the midterm elections, President Trump was exploiting Kanye West, who clearly went off the rails at times, and former, uh, uh, rather, former NFL player Jim Brown, a legend, in an effort to get more black votes in the midterm elections. Thus, the crowd of cameras in the Oval Office to record West's conversation with President Trump and the Republicans while criticizing the Democrats. And we'll see what happens, you know, as a result of this. But it was certainly quite a day there, yeah. huh? Wasn't it Elvis that met with uh, Nixon in the Oval yeah, Office? So that's right. Yeah, This absolutely. is not unprecedented, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, isn't no, it? No, no, you're, you're right. absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these days, everything is a controversy. It is, right? right? Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. This All right. is just another one. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, thank you. Okay. LA City Councilman Mitch Englander has announced he will be stepping down from his council seat at the end of the year. Englander is leaving his post to become vice president of the Oakview Group, a sports entertainment company. Englander has represented the 12th district in the San Fernando Valley since 2011 and has served as the council's president pro tem since 2013. An incredible escape how two astronauts survived a failed rocket launch. Plus, a daring rescue caught on camera. Firefighters go to extremes to rescue a man trapped inside a burning building. I'm Jim Hill, live at uh, Miller Park here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where tomorrow in Game 1, it's the Dodgers and the Milwaukee Brewers in the National League Championship Series. Coming up next, we will hear from Dodgers starter Clayton Kershaw right here on CBS2.